Maimonides is one of Judaism's greatest opponents of Christianity. He believed it unacceptable for a Jew to convert, and that Jews who do should be shunned. However, Maimonides gives us an argument which actually supports the claim that Jesus is Messiah, and it's an argument I've never heard any Christian give. So in his Laws of Kings, Maimonides writes, The thoughts of the Creator, of the world, are not within the power of man to reach them. For our ways are not his ways, and our thoughts are not his thoughts. And all these matters of Jesus of Nazareth, and that of the Ishmaelite, who arose after him, are only to straighten the way of the King Messiah, and to fix the entire world, to serve God as one. Maimonides argued that Christianity and Islam will help the world eventually submit to Israel as God's sovereign nation. So what if Maimonides was right for the wrong reasons? Let's assume that the rabbis are right, and that some future Jewish ethnic and religious leader, we can call him David Goldstein, came to power and did what the rabbis said that Messiah would do. He'll rebuild the temple, he'll reinstitute the priesthood, and he'll be anointed the king of Israel and subdue the world to Israel's sovereignty. So, how will the Christian and Islamic nations react to this new King David? Well, since this King David is not a Muslim and not recognized as a prophet of Islam, the Muslim world is not simply going to obey his orders. So, if Goldstein tries to build a temple, on the Temple Mount, he will be chiseling Islamic territory, which is an act of war under Sharia law. Islam also expects a Mahdi leader to submit the world to Sharia law in preparation for the Last Day of Judgment. Since this won't happen, David Goldstein will not be accepted. So, because Islam will not accept such a leader, Goldstein will have to subdue the Muslim world by force until all the true believers are wiped out, and the moderates eventually submit to his power at the cost of considerable bloodshed. But Christianity is going to be even worse, since anyone other than Jesus who fulfills such prophecies will be labeled immediately as the Antichrist, as a lying trickster servant of the devil, and will not be able to be convinced otherwise. Any argument he gives will be dismissed as trickery. The Antichrist would be able to deceive even the elect if that were possible. So such a person would be opposed to the last man. And therefore, in such a scenario, this guy Goldstein would have to wage war against the entire Christian world until all resistance is stamped out as well. So theoretically, there could be some future Jewish messiah who brings about the world into submission to Israel. But any such person, if he's a future Jewish religious leader, is going to have to kill at least a half a billion people in order to achieve these ends. But now, if we assume that Jesus is messiah, then we have a better situation. In both Christianity and Islam, Jesus is a prophet, or greater than a prophet in the case of Christianity. Both religions require that all of its adherents do whatever Jesus says to do. So if Jesus was, let's say, to return in the flesh to Israel, all he'd have to do is say, you must submit to Israel and do whatever Israel says. And the next thing you would hear is the sound of three billion people bending the knee to Israel and doing whatever the Israeli leadership wants them to do, without anyone having to fire a single shot. Shalom. Aleichem.